So welcome to a new video. Today I want to talk about boost control and controlling boost either with an internal or external wastegate because some people or a lot of people I see actually still do it wrong or make some kind of mistake and uh, then issues while tuning occur and either you can't control boost or maybe the boost control doesn't work or uh, whatever. I'm going to start with an external wastegate first. This is kind of a tile knockoff wastegate, so it has the same ports as a tile does and is set up for basically using spring pressure or a uh, three port boost controller. So as you can see here, I have the top still on and there are no fittings installed in the top. So there would be a place for one to go here, to go here, or yeah, that's about it. And then I have the place for a fitting here. And there would be one here, which is blocked off. And there would be one here, which is also blocked off. The reason why that is blocked off, you would want to use only this one or only one of these ports. Every other port that has uh, access to air and is not for water cooling like these two for example should be blocked off and here you have to screw in your barb to use your boost control line so this is where the line goes and that goes either if you want to run wastegate pressure to a boost source so for example the intake manifold or the uh, intercooler piping or the turbocharger or whatever it needs to see boost and then this pushes the diaphragm normally there would be the spring in there but here would be the spring and as soon as the boost pressure of or the pressure of the spring is overcome the diaphragm would be pushed up and the valve would open and so your wastegate would open so that's basically the explanation of this if you would run boost, boost pressure to here it would hold the wastegate spring actually shut and you, the wastegate would actually not open at all. So that would be a problem uh, to say the least if you, for example, have not tuned for it, running a stock engine or whatever. So run it to the bottom port or the bottom part and block off any other holes. And because you don't want to end up with any excess pressure that can influence the opening, you want to leave at least one of the ports in the top open so that it is so that you can um, yeah so that it works properly here there's also the possibility to put in a screw to give the wastegate some pretension and limit the way or limit the amount it can open but that's not really something i would recommend so that's with an external wastegate i'm going to explain how it's how, how it works with a three port boost controller as well but now we're going to look at the internal wastegate that's much simpler on an internal wastegate you have the same principle although it works kind of in reverse and that's why a lot of people do it wrong because they think on an internal wastegate well it's um, fed to the top part of the wastegate so i have to do that the same way on the external wastegate as well but there's a huge difference because the way that the actuator works is if it is like this it the the uh, flap is closed and it actually needs to push this way to open it on the internal uh, external wastegate it's the other way around so it needs to push it to there and then the so it needs to push it to there and then the flap opens so that means we have to put pressure on the top which pushes down the diaphragm and the spring, which sits on the bottom and opens the wastegate flap. This again is the same way as with the other one. This is just ran to a boost source and that's how an internal wastegate is set up. If there's also the possibility to, so that you have multiple ports, so you have multiple ports here, so, uh, or multiple ports here and here one, then if you wanted to run it this way so that you are running spring pressure only connect it to this port and leave the other one open 
And if there are multiple in one chamber, so on the top or the bottom, you need to close off the other ones that are also there so that the pressure can actually build up inside the actuator. Going over how an electronic three-port solenoid works. There are also a lot of boost controllers that work in the same way on, or use this kind of uh, setup or a Mac valve. This is basically the same uh, thing, but this is a Volkswagen um, N75. And it works in a way where if it is pulsed at a PWM frequency of about 30 Hertz, then the it um, basically creates a kind of a leak in the hose between the boost source and your wastegate actuator. So the line kind of loses air and therefore the wastegate actuator does not see the full pressure and will open at a later point. And the more air you are actually letting escape through that uh, artificial leak, the higher the boost level will be. So in this case, how to check if or how to check how you need to set it up is you have to wire it in and then blow into one of the ports and the one where it comes out on the other one, for example, if I blow in here and it comes out here, then that's where I want to connect my hoses or my hose. So I want to intercept my um, source for the wastegate actuator with these two barbs. The other one is left open because that's just the breather for the leak. You can of course feed that back into the intake or whatever, but uh, that can also be open. So that for example, if the valve fails and uh, stays or does not work, then it is still a 100% pass through and the air can still pass through without any restriction and you're running wastegate pressure. If you would run it the other way, so if you run boost source here and that to the actuator, well, if the valve fails or does not actuate, then well, you wouldn't get any flow to the actuator and you would run basically maximum boost, which you obviously don't want to. So that's the way how to determine how a three port boost controller is hooked up. The polarity in theory shouldn't matter, but on some there is polarity on there. So uh, please check that and wire it uh, plus to the battery and ground to the ECU because the ECU always switches the ground side. If you would be running a manual boost controller, so for example just a bleed valve, depending on this setup it is, um, you would use a T-piece in this without anything else and then on the side of the T-piece, on the bottom side basically that goes off to the bleed valve, then there you would put in the bleed valve which you can open or close and manually control the leak that in the case of the electronic boost controller was co controlled by PWM is now controlled by the screw and you can control the leak in, in quotations that way and control your boost level in that way. That though is not as precise and you obviously cannot taper the boost or anything it's just a very crude method of boost control. 